Hello and welcome to Driver's Therapy. We are continuing on with our course of how to use a multimeter like a pro. In this video, we're gonna take our multimeter and we're gonna go out there, we're actually gonna be using the functions and capabilities. So this is gonna be a hands-on video. But before we kick off the video, real quickly, we need to talk about safety. Please follow all the instructions, all the precautions, all the warnings to everything that you're working with, the tool, uh, the equipment, and your surroundings. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead, go out and have fun now. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with testing a car battery. So typically your car battery should be roughly around 12.6 volts uh, to standing still around 80 degrees. So with our multimeter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put it in DC. And we're gonna go ahead and look for the positive and negative. So this is the positive and that's the negative. So we're gonna do that with our leads as well. And we show 12.3 volts. So that's good. We're also gonna go ahead and test out the auto V function. And this is where it will tell between AC and DC. And right now it is DC. I'm not sure if I could change that, nope. All right, and then we're gonna put that and it shows 12.3. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test some fuses. So here in this junction box, we're gonna test about five fuses. And this is a very common test if you're trying to troubleshoot something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a multimeter to DC voltage. And then we're gonna go ahead and ground our black lead. I'm gonna use the negative post on the battery. And then I'm gonna to go to some fuses right here. And as you can see, I have 11.91 volts. I'm gonna to go to the next one here, 11.9 as well. Our third one, same reading. Our fourth one as well, and our fifth one is the same. So that's how you would test some fuses using a multimeter. So now we're gonna be trying out the audible continuity tester. And this is one of my most favorite features of a multimeter. Essentially, I'm gonna be using this RC car to demonstrate a full car. So imagine if you were to scale and you were small and you needed to test a wire that all, was all the way in the front of your vehicle, but the wire ran all the way across the vehicle to the middle. How would you test that? Well, to make sure that the wire is, or the cable is still connected and there's not a short or anything like that. Well, in this RC car, if you see right here, this is the cable for the battery. As you can see here, there's a negative and positive wire and uh, they're color coded as red and black. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be testing out the ground to ground on the uh, main ground to one of the LED grounds. So it's gonna be really neat. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a lead attachment and we'll talk all about that in the fifth video over this pin. And the reason why it'd be really hard to hold that on there and to test it. And then I'm gonna attach this to the multimeter. I mean, to the multimeter lead. And this is the part I want you guys to really see, all right? As you can see, this wire goes inside there, probably connects to a circuit board and then branches out to all the LEDs and all the wiring. And I want you to look, look at this LED all the way back here, guys. It's all the way back here. This one right here. And as you can see, there's a red wire and a black wire. And look what happens when we touch the red wire, nothing. But when I come down and touch the black wire, we get an audio symbol of continuity. So we know that that wire is connected to the grounding system and it is intact. So our next test is gonna be the ohms and resistance test. Now, there could be a whole PhD study done on resistance, and I'm sure there is. So in this video, I'm just gonna to try to convey the most possible basic testing and concept of it. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and go to ohms. And essentially, resistance. Essentially, think of anything that is impeding the flow of something. So if you look at the left, we have a fuse, and it's a 30 amp fuse. We have a 30 as well, 30 fuse. 
And as you could tell, look how clean the left one is, right? It just looks nice and clean and, and good. And the right one, it's still connected, right? But look at all this corrosion and just build up on it in the inside. Something happened to that, I don't know. But look what happens when we test them for resistance. So when I put my leads on this, I get 0 0.1 ohms of resistance. Easy, right? So that means that the flow of electricity is impeding, it's fine. But I am not going to mess up this test by pushing down either too hard or too lightly. I'm gonna use the same force and look what happens when I try to test this fuse. You see that guys? Open lead. There's so much corrosion here. If you look at the lead, even if I move them around, it tries to get a reading. It's a lot of resistance. Here's a fun fact. Remember, I don't know if you guys, if I mentioned this, but you could have continuity on a circuit or a wire, but you could have high resistance. Let's see if this has continuity. It has continuity, guys. But when we try to get a proper resistance check on it, it gives us open lead. So that is a great example of the ohm slash resistance check. So our next function test is gonna be the millivolts. So let's go ahead and go there. Now this one, remember, it had the uh, AC and DC. So we're gonna press our function button. We're gonna to go to DC millivolts. All right, at this point in time, oh, looking for something that's millivolts in your house laying around is really hard. But I ran into this little lamp that broke off, this little uh, flashlight, it's LED. And I was thinking this probably does have millivolts. And guys, it does, so this is exciting. All right, so it's gonna be a little difficult to do this because technically you're supposed to remove your, you know, your hands and anything that's impeding the test. But for this video purposes, it's kind of hard to do it, so I'm just gonna hold it with my hand. All right. There we go, I have a connection. If you see that, that 60, 61 really is my hand. And, and just like the human conductivity uh, naturally that we have, which is crazy. But watch what happens when I, I'm gonna let go of one, and I'm gonna turn this bad boy on. I, the power button's on now. And look at that, guys. We have about 107, 111 volts, uh, millivolts DC. Of course, plus or minus taking consideration to hand. But this is a great time to show you the min and max. So what I'm gonna do is I'm press the maximum button, and that's gonna tell us what our maximum is. So it's showing 142 millivolts DC, with our minimum being negative 13, which really doesn't count because there's a variation in there. And our average was, we did that test too short to even consider the average. But there you go guys, that was a millivolt test. And now you guys saw how to test a small little wire in a LED lamp that had roughly over 100 millivolts. All right, so we're gonna show you the AC setting and uh, I'm gonna actually do a real test on its outlet. But I can't stress, guys, this stuff is really dangerous. Don't mess with this if you have no idea about residential stuff. This is just a demonstration of the multimeter. This isn't how to test your outlet. So don't, don't recreate this unless you know what you're doing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put that on AC voltage function setting. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my leads in here. And as you see, I have 123 volts of AC. And that is gonna be kind of normal for your residential between 110 and 120 in the US. So that concludes the testing. This was fun because you should have seen me before I filmed this video. I was going around the house and I was like, what can I use? And I was just pulling out random things. And so it was a lot of fun for me. And when, you're making, when I'm making these videos, I learn a lot. So I hope you guys learned something as well. I really appreciate you watching the video. And for the next video, we're gonna go into advanced level. And this is where some of you guys who already have some years in your belt dealing with multimeter and troubleshooting and basic electronics, this is really gonna be neat because we're gonna go to the next level and it's gonna be really neat. So you guys stay tuned. You guys made it all the way here. So now you're going to advance and then we're gonna be at the fifth video after that. And then you're gonna graduate driver's therapy's first course. All right guys. We'll see you soon.